Welcome everyone. Adam the Woo here as the recording of this Sunday, January 2nd, 2021. Behind me, the clock tower is striking nine times. 9 a.m. at this moment here in Barnesville, Georgia. Now, the traffic that's going by, the one or two cars, kind of obscured the sound of that fantastic little clock tower right there. There's also a mural behind me. Spoiler alert, there will be a lot of rain today. There are storms rolling through the area. I stayed on the outskirts of Macon, Georgia. Took the 45 minute commute up here to Barnesville to start off. Population of about six or 7,000 folks. Some of the communities I will be going through. That truck might be having some transmission problems. It's stopping in the middle of the road. No, it's pulling over. Nonetheless, he has a friend behind him. I'm inviting you to join me. I tried to start the intro at the beginning of the clock tower, and then the, you couldn't really hear it. Maybe you could hear it. Join me. Shall you? Hearing some chickens or roosters up in there. Behind that fence line. Can't really get any closer. It's private property over there. But I hear you over there. Fowl, some sort of bird. Go walk back over to this mural and show that area as well as the, the fire department across the street that have kind of a antique looking vehicle. Basically, I drove up from the outskirts of Macon. It rained a little bit. There are storms on the horizon throughout the day. I do have my umbrella, so I'll be good. And throughout the evening, so it should make it interesting. But as of right now, not a drop of rain, but that will change. There's a gazebo right here. And this just shows a little mural of the town. You got some cotton there, some farming going on. You got the cotton being pulled along there by that horse-drawn carriage. And here is downtown Barnesville. Little classic car alert. And this park, Cyrus M. Nooner Ritz Park, 2008, dedicated the history and heritage of the textile industry and workforce in Barnesville. Just to give a little perspective here, kind of pinpoint more or less the area that I'm gonna be at. So Barnesville, right there in the center of the screen, here, where the pin is pointed out, is where I am momentarily. From here, I'm gonna venture up to Zebulon, and then from Zebulon, kind of dip down into a town, if you see it down below it, called Meansville. So I want to go through Meansville and some of the other little small towns. And there's also, look at this, a, a place called The Rock, Georgia. Not Rock, Georgia, but The Rock, Georgia. So I'm going to go through there and then kind of continue down over into this area and then loop back around into Macon. So I should hit at least a dozen or more little areas, little communities. And who knows what I'm going to find? I certainly don't. It's just part of the part of the all part of the experience and oh my goodness this little stretch is impressive most impressive <laughs> look at this tire mart holy cow this is good not only the mural but that retro looking signage could be original it says tire mart it has the Proverbs 3-9 inscribed next to this gentleman's jawline. And the Barnesville Bottle Shop right next door. No one under 21 permitted inside. That is a thing of beauty right there. A lot of murals in this town I've noticed. Obviously the one I just showed, but then also this one. Good old Barnesville. 
the train tracks right here. Which makes perfect sense that they would have a train, or at least a train car, right over here across the way, next to the depot as well. I do like the rain. I don't like when it's raining on me, but the soothing sounds of car tires and walking through puddles is something kind of nice. That's what's happening as that vehicle went by. Southern Railroad, X471. Sitting here next to the tracks. And this is the old depot right there. Back in August of 1938, FDR passed through here, gave a speech on the outskirts of town. And he is right up there on the side of this wall as well, here in his car, with the train going by, very, very close in proximity. You don't, probably don't want to be that close, especially when you're the commander-in-chief right on the front. It says FDR on the license plate. Yeah, some great murals here in this town and this fountain. The Murphy Building across the way, dated 1884. And the town itself, okay, that's nice, founded by Gideon Barnes back in 1826. Back in the horse and buggy days. Could this be Gideon? Could be up for artistic interpretation. Or maybe, maybe it is. And there is a yet another clock tower feature there. Also the site of a hospital used to be right here. I always love all these little information placards. Yeah, the Murphy Building, 1884. There's a stairwell. Oh, here's another mural. Well, it's part of the same one, but you know what I mean. This is a great little town. I really like it. Now, there is some, it says notice on the side of the wall, kind of looking up the stairwell. That is not structurally sound. This is how horror films begin. It says right there, occupation of this building is prohibited. Not only prohibited, but also unlawful. Pennywise? <laughs> Top of the M.W. Smith building. The crow perched. I see you up there, crow. See you later, crow. Love all these old buildings, like this bank right here. Look at this with the little balcony up top. More crows going by. Look at that little ledge in that balcony. I don't know why I get so excited about some of this very unique old school architecture. And it has bank. 1897 established up top, but also this kind of carved into the side. Love it. That's a relic. All right. Gonna keep moving on. Yeah, I like this place a lot. Barnesville. Got to remember this for future reference when I'm going back through. Very quaint and cozy. Continued on a bit. Pulled over here off the side of the road just outside of Zebulon. Hear the insects off in the woods. What I find fascinating are all these relics here off the side of the thoroughfare. Take a look at all of these. Old fire trucks, quite a few of them. This third one here, an antique. Well, they're probably all antiques. 
just outside of Zebulon. Interesting name for a community. Someone's got quite the collection here. Very cool. It is a real place. Up there on the side of the water tower, Meansville, M-E-A-N-S-ville. Meansville. This is the city hall and the former train station here in Meansville. Right next to the water tower. As I was pulling into town, I saw something pretty amazing. I'll walk down the hill and show it. On the corner of West Main and Means Street is this building, which the front has been removed, kind of destroyed, which itself is pretty awesome. However, take a peek around the side at this in really good condition not spray painted over look at that little advertisement there from the past painted on the side of the bricks coke is it coca-cola classic there's also some wording up top here Tough to make out of the type of general store that it was. I also have my have my umbrella because it is starting to starting to come down just a little bit. That is awesome. Look at that. Always on the lookout for these. Your guess is as good as mine on what that says there on that wording. I'm gonna say probably a general store of some sort. Very difficult to make it out there. Very faded. There's another look inside. See some standing water there obviously, which will probably escalate considerably as the storms roll through. Today the back door. Around the side, oh even a chimney there. I didn't notice that at first. There's a fireplace right over there. You see the bottom of the fireplace and then the chimney leading up. Hello cows. Yeah, it's pretty rainy today. Gonna be some storms rolling through later. Make sure you find some shelter, some cover. You know, under a tree perhaps or, I don't know, you probably have a place you can go. It's supposed to be a lot of rain and lightning, so be careful cows. Okay, see you later. See you later, cows. Now approaching this bridge that crosses over Potato Creek. Got the puddles here. And a wooden railing along the side, not metal, not concrete that you see. On some more heavy duty bridges. This is just wood. I'm walking through. Splashing through the puddles. A little creek up here on the bridge itself, but also a creek down there. Potato Creek. Get my feet will get a little soggy over here, but kind of peek over into Potato Creek. It's definitely not rush hour at the moment through here. Not bumper to bumper at all. The stick. Hello, stick. There it goes. See a stick.
going down Potato Creek. I was standing on that bridge for about five minutes, no vehicles, and all of a sudden, big 18-wheeler went by, honked its horn. Look at this. <laughs> Almost had a stand-by-me moment. And it wasn't a train, but it was a truck. I was in the middle of the bridge, and I thought, this is kind of a small bridge. I saw the truck coming, approaching. I mean, it's fine. It wasn't as intense as the stand-by-me moment, but yeah, this is... Little wooden banister there. Not affiliated with Dwayne Johnson in any way, shape, or form. The Rock, Georgia. Not Rock, Georgia. The Rock, Georgia. Has its own post office, even though less than 200 residents here in town. A real place. This is U.S. history. I see the globe right there. Oh yes, I remember my younger days, going around town on my bicycle, collecting aluminum cans, and then going to a place that would buy them. They buy them for 35 cents a pound. We BU Alum cans, 35 cents a pound. That brings back memories. You know, obviously I didn't grow up here, but just in general. Can't be the only one that did that. And this town runs parallel to the train tracks. And it shows just how far Barnesville is, 8.3 miles, and Thomaston, 7.7 .7 miles, the halfway point between the two, you know, give or take about a half a mile. That's nice. American flag there on the side of that wall. Coca-Cola on the other side and flag here on this side. the outskirts of that little area on these cross streets seems like it would have been a good place to have a little store however it didn't last now this stands this decayed building stands where a once open one once was and the door is open over there next to those pallets. I don't know if I should go in though. Hello? Hello?
There's the counter, the sink. Got some cobwebs to use a Jim Varney reference, earnest joke. This door has been attacked by cobs. Thorns here. All right, carrying on. Sometimes it's difficult to tell if someone is residing at a home or not. The van there, old van, parked. Also this Mack truck. The grass has considerably grown over. But I really like that van. The back tire's been removed. Actually, all the tires have been removed. Just on the rims. Yeah, I think this is a pretty much good, a good view from this angle. Look at this, this truck's all grown over as well. Look at that. Right on 74 West is Yatesville, a caring community, the water tower says. Also nicknamed the Red Dirt City. Population of just under 400. Named after a gentleman by the name of Mr. Yates, who was the first resident here. 100 years or so ago. An old building over here. And a place called Mulling Grocery over there on that corner. Don't see these too much anymore. TV antennas. Passing through Culloden now. And the weather seems to be cooperating. Very overcast, but it has stopped raining. For now. Up, oh, I hear more chickens. There's chickens everywhere in these little small Georgia towns. I can hear them crowing off in the distance. says public well 1780 is a date stamp on it I'm seeing a couple 1780s yeah this area has been around for a while the first people that settled here back in 1780 according to that and according to the water tower it's written up on the water tower too kind of silhouetted out but and Alfred Blalock, MD, world famous surgeon, was born here back in 1899. Peeking through this window, uh, what was the museum? A while back. Doesn't look to be too active now. In fact, the sign up top is just kind of dangling there. One of the chains is broken. This is a farther back view. It's the one here on this side. Not the boarded up side. That's some sort of weather device here. 
That's different. This is City Hall. And a tire service place across the way there. This is the, not the town square, but basically the town triangle. Because the road formulates into a little triangle here where City Hall is. Continued on a bit, now into Musella. I like it already. For obvious reasons. Here at the C.F. Hayes General Store. Got an RC Cola sign right there. Besides the obvious. Coca-Cola Classic on the side. Very nice. All right, I'm gonna pull over and get out and walk around. This is turning out to be a pretty fantastic day. I do say so myself. Here's the Musilla Gin and Cotton Company. Got a couple station wagons parked over there. Something a couple that Clark Griswold would be proud of. And this is the little main strip through town. A couple cute little storefronts here. Doesn't look they don't look to be occupied. A picnic area next to those, covered up in case of the elements. And then of course, as I passed, pulling in here, the CF Hayes Jr. General Merchandise Stand, which because as a recording of this, it is a Sunday is not open, if it's even open at all. That's where the fruit and veggies would be. Right along here. And they even have some old school bottles here. A Dad's root beer, an A&W, some cheer wine, a little knee high, sun drop down in there. Love it, love it. The Sunbeam Bread. Oh, take a look at this. It says, do not spit on the floor. And you can strike all matches there. And there's a Pepsi, Pepsi Cola bottle opener. All right, moving on. On to Roberta, Georgia. Population of just over a thousand. The shopping district right through here. Used to be a very bustling and growing tourism town until 1940s when the railroad, at least the passenger aspect of the railroad, stopped running through here. And this is, of course, way before interstates and whatnot. So the town really kind of stopped growing. Now it's just a quaint little community of a thousand. There is a little placard over here in honor of Clarence Mosley, nicknamed Ribs Peel. Underneath the, the Southern Railroad train car here. Clarence Mosley Ribs Peel. He was a trainman for up to 38 years, and he stayed with his train, even though he learned the other train was fast approaching on a curve, he chose to protect the safety of others on the rail in case of an erroneous message. It was later learned that the other train had indeed received the wrong orders, so he has been honored here next to the Roberta train station. And the tracks 
no longer here anymore. Very courageous to do that. Stay with the train to protect others. Rolling through Reynolds now. Also keep in mind, you know, as recording of this, this is a Sunday. Which might explain why there's not a lot of people down here. Because, you know, Sundays, not a lot of places open in these small towns. So there might be a few more people on a weekday. But can't imagine a whole heck of a lot more. But just keep that in mind. Sundays, especially southern towns, usually not a lot of people out and about in the downtown sections. Although most of these businesses look closed. But I just wanted to preface that, or not preface it, but just state that. And according to that mural, this town of Reynolds is the sweetest spot in Georgia. Nice. There's a big radio or TV antenna right there, too. There's your sweet spot right there. I think that was Cable Guy. That quote. Oh, there goes an old school van driving by. Nice. Here in Potterville, not a lot of residents in Potterville. But there is a fire depot, fire department, and very peaceful area. It just so happens to have a dog relaxing in its front yard. How you doing, buddy? Just enjoying the day, huh? Here in Potterville. What if that dog's name is Harry? Probably not. There are a few homes here in Potterville. Up the way there, it's a newer one. And here's an older one. As well as a business that calls itself the Potterville Flea Market? Yard sale, Potterville Yard Sale. And there's a lake down there. But what drew my attention to pull over here is this beauty. That's awesome. Good old Potterville. That's a relic. By crossing over this river, that was a little bit of an echo where I'm standing. Might not show up on camera. Not, not an intense echo, but a little bit of an echo. Hello! Hello! Yeah, it's like bouncing off the water and then under the bridge. Walking across the city limit of ideal. Now that is a great railroad depot station. Some would say ideal. I had to. Sure, it's not the first time people who passed through here have used that joke. Pretty cliche, I would imagine. But win in not Rome, but win in ideal. That's a, that's a pretty cool looking building right there. Zip code 31041. City Hall is also the library, according to that sign right down there.
Got a pecan company, pecan plant right there. Here's some sort of like a grinding noise over there from a machine that's working. Doesn't get much more Main Street USA than this. Right? Look at this. Montezuma, Georgia. Quintessential Main Street USA. To say the least. A little consignment shop up here called Do Overs Consignment. This is Dooley Street. That's the corner of Dooley and Beaver Street. Right off the Flint River. I like it a lot. And on the opposite side, corner of Dooley and Cherry, there's little things that excite me about some of these little communities and the architecture like Maryland's Salon of Beauty, this just kind of random door wedged on the side, you know, between the businesses. So property line of the one business ends here. But why would there be a door there, but there is a door there? Now obviously this is all part of it. Just stuff like that is fascinating to me. It's probably just me. Over here, there's this stairwell that leads up to the side of Pee Wee's Bakery Suites. Pee Wee Bakery Suites. This blue building, this aqua blue building. Next stop, Pee Wee's Bakery. And it looks like there's a residence. Okay, now. Pee Wee's Bakery is around the side, but this is like a private residence here. Maybe that's where Pee Wee lives. Residence total about 3,000. Yeah, between three and 4,000. Since the last tally. And parts of it are falling apart over here along the main thoroughfare. It's like Josie's Restaurant used to be right here. You can see the writing on the side of the wall. Still using seven digit dialing with a number on the side there. This is probably not structurally sound anymore. Hence the little caution tape through here. Been covering a lot of ground so far and I'm kind of doing a loop from where I am outside on the outside of Macon left this morning. Circling around, covering quite a few miles. I think I'm going to start heading back up not, re not retracing my steps, but you know, doing a circle so I'm not hitting a lot of the same places. I'll show on the atlas where I'm at and kind of the direction I'll be heading back up through. Got the continuation of, of the day and afternoon. Back to the atlas. I am at the moment in Montezuma, which is kind of right here at the, the crevice. You can see right there. So I'm going to go up this road and go through Marshallville and then Fort Valley, probably, you know, in the episode there. Well, maybe even go up a little farther, but kind of in that general area. So I kind of started here, looped around, went all through here today. So yeah, I kind of did, kind of did more like that the course of the day. So I'm just kind of doing a circle and, you know, staying a few nights on the outskirts of Macon area just to give some bearings it's always good to have it's always good to have like a, a map you know you can use the you can use the interwebs obviously but it's good to have a, a hard copy as well to see kind of where you're at this comes in handy up oh, I hear the train
for this angle also. There's the second water tower here in Montezuma. It says great future and rich past at the top of it. Making my way now through Marshallville Settled in the 1820s. Seen quite a few signs stating that, and this mural up here states the same thing. Marshallville. Right up top, once again, settled 1820 or the 1820s. This mural here. Got a deer, got an oxen, not an oxen horse or a mule, not an ox. And this business obviously is open because the air conditioning's on. It says asparagus, peaches, and a rather large turkey right up to top there. And some flowers as well. The train depot has been converted into something else. A liquor store. The Marshallville Liquor Store. This is good. Frigidaire Appliances. And the air conditioner unit is an antique store. And above that antique store is this old classic neon here. Frigidaire Appliances. end of the strip is the bank. Now, it might not seem like much, but you know the original tile work is still down here. And I'm going to say these are probably the original doors from this general store. All these years later, kind of still remains. There's uh, some broken glass and then there's some foliage in here, which is kind of dried up. But around the side, are some other antiques like this pump and part of an old section the beautification for the former mayor first female mayor of Marshallville Rachel Bickley Speicher but over here is one of the, the lights and the railroad lights. Look at the vines up there coming up the side of that building. How's it going, cows? Hey, cows. Just wanted to say hi. Yeah, I'm just passing through. Just doing a little back road adventure. Okay. See you later, cows. Arrive now in Fort Valley. And up on the water tower says Georgia's Peach City. Fort Valley. Here's a closer perspective as I pull past this pole. Georgia's Peach City. And where a former business used to sit. The building was either torn down or possibly burned down. There's a relatively new-ish mural here. Fort Valley, Georgia's Peach City.
with the artist Christopher Johnson name right down there. Fort Valley. Is this this is within eye view of the water tower which is right there. The last community of the day, Byron. Right here also along the tracks. Founded in 1874. That's gonna do it for today. I appreciate you watching. Thanks so much for tagging along on this adventure. I'll see you in the next video, but I wanna, I wanna end with this. This is the ultimate temptation here. There's a seat that anyone could drive by, say, you know, I well, if they're walking, probably if they're driving, they're already comfortable sitting, but if they're walking and they need to, to rest their weary bones, says, broken, do not sit on this but if it wasn't here it would be no temptation that is that right there it's a trap i'll see you in the next video the vlog is over <laughs>